So, hello, my name is Alex Pentland, professor at MIT, and I run a group called Connection Science, which actually develops techniques and open source software for helping countries and companies deal with AI in a way that is both effective, efficient, uh, but also ethical. And the key idea is that in this new world we're entering, you have data everywhere. Most of the data is in private hands, in the hands of companies. Uh, but yet you need that data to be able for uh, to be able to run government, to be able to be efficient about social systems, civic systems. How are you going to do that in a way that's trustworthy, unbiased, fair, and that the people understand what's happening? And so I've developed a method that I call open algorithms uh, that allows you to take data from private entities like companies and combine it in a safe way to produce data about entire countries or other large structures, large international companies, etc., um, in a way that's safe, auditable, and understandable. So the drivers of this are things like security. Uh, if you put all the data in one spot, it's sure to get stolen. You have enormous risk. It's ownership. Different people own the data. And with privacy concerns, individuals own the data in a certain sense. They should be able to know what's happening. They should have control over the data about them. How do you put this together? The big idea is that instead of putting data all in one place, you keep data where it's originally collected. This gives you federated data rather than concentrated data. So the people that have ownership rights over data continue to hold on to the data, but they agree to algorithmically answer questions. So the, the computer that the data is on is also willing to answer questions for the public good or for the joint good. Those questions are called algorithms. And in our system, we call these open algorithms because they're things that are legally agreed to beforehand. So instead of going to someone and saying, can you give me your data, you say, well, here's an algorithm. I'll show it to you. Can you run this on your data and give me the answer? Legally and organizationally, that's a much easier thing to do. And in fact, Small countries like Estonia have been doing it for a long time, and big companies like AT&T do it as a matter of self-protection to make sure that they're not breaking the law. It's, while it sounds complicated to the human ear, from a computer point of view, leaving the data where it's collected and answering questions is, in many cases, more efficient than moving the data to one place and answering the questions there. The difference is, is that it's a lot safer to leave the data where it was collected. Uh, military people figured this out a long time ago. They stopped building castles with moats, which in today's computer world are called firewalls, and they went to defense in depth. That's what we knew with data. When you do that, all of a sudden you can keep track of what questions are being asked and what data. And the people who collected the data, the people who own the data, have the ability to monitor if the questions are ones that they agree to or not. And so you can record what's happening in the system. It's auditable. So if you have a question about bias or fairness, you can go and answer that question because now you have a record of what was done with the data and who did it. So for instance, in the country of Colombia, we were able to look at their uh, poverty programs and discover that there were almost a million people who were getting benefits that shouldn't, and a million people that weren't getting benefits that should. And that comes through the ability to audit all of the decisions, which again, to human ears, sounds complicated, but actually, from a computer point of view, it's just a dashboard that keeps track of what's happening. 
So that's the sort of big view is that instead of having one centralized control, one centralized repository, you have a federation of different players and their interests that agree to answer certain questions for certain functions, and you audit that. So as I said, there are some countries like Estonia that are doing that. Recently, uh, Europe agreed, the Eurostat, the official data uh, organizations of all of the EU countries, uh, adopted this sort of framework. And there are several other countries that we're working with, Israel, Australia, others, that are also uh, putting up pilots in this to be able to explore how they can get better insights about their country and have better policies by using this public and private data together in an open, auditable way. So that's the key thing. Um, we're deploying these things in different place, parts of the world. We'd be happy to help you if you're interested. Um, people are typically interested in things like social programs being more efficient, uh, being able to have greater income from tourists or from innovation, uh, or new sorts of civic systems, better transportation, better public health, and we help build those things for people. Uh, we don't build turnkey uh, solutions. What we do is we build prototypes that are then specialized to be operational for your particular situation. And if you want to know more about this, I'd refer you to, for instance, the keynote I did for the EU presidency uh, or other sorts of talks like that that uh, uh, we'll be making available to you. And we have a, a book called Trust Data, uh, which describes the techniques. It includes the piece that the Obama White House asked us to do for them, the piece that the UN Secretary General asked, uh, and the piece for the World Economic Forum that describe both the policy, the legal, and the technical aspects. Uh, interestingly, the Chinese central government just translated this into China, Chinese, and published it through the Chinese uh, Central Economic Press. So you might be interested in $12 on Amazon. Uh, uh, so that's uh, the top level story here. I hope you're interested. We'd be happy to uh, talk to you and, and work with you. Uh, thank you.